I'm Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy and welcome to the Fabulous Feathers Free Motion Challenge. In this video, I'm gonna give you some different options for quilting the borders on the challenge panel. I'm also gonna give you tips on connecting your border feathers and other ways to treat those areas of your quilt. First of all, when you start quilting the border of your quilt, it might be daunting to know where to start and when to do it. The good news is there's really no wrong option. You can save it for the end and do it all at once like I did, or you can quilt it in sections as you go down the quilt like I would on my long arm. Quilting that feather so it wraps around the whole quilt isn't tricky, but there is that element of making it connect eventually. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna avoid that altogether and incorporate motifs into the border. What's great about this is I don't have to worry about connecting them together. I can quilt each motif to fit in that area and then move on to the next one. This is great for those of you that wanna quilt your borders as you work your way down the quilt, for those of you that might be working on a long arm, or for those of you that don't wanna deal with the hassle of quilting it so that it connects at the end. For this first one, I'm only gonna quilt half a motif and I'm gonna use the print on the border to fill it in. So starting from this area right here where I have that gray colored curve, I'm gonna aim for the middle of it and that's where I'm gonna quilt the center of my motif. And if you remember, the center can be curvy, it can be pointy, you can add embellishments, do whatever you'd like, but I'm gonna quilt it so that it stops about an inch or so away from the edge because I'm gonna add echoing and filler to really make this motif pop. Once I have that center quilted, I'm gonna use that inner border as the spine of my petals. Since my outer shape kind of curves down, I'm gonna quilt my petals gradually smaller as I work my way to that side. And once I get to where I'm starting to run out of room, I'm gonna echo my way back to the center and do the same on the other side. Now, of course, by now, you know I'm using contrasting thread so you can really see what I'm doing. But in this instance, I would definitely use a light gray thread color so that it didn't distract from the beautiful center of the quilt. Plus, using a blending thread color also helps hide any of those, you know, unintentional customizations or what other people might call mistakes. Now, I'm just eyeballing my petals, trying to keep them the same distance away from that outer curve of my border. But if you wanted to, you could definitely mark a reference line to help keep you on track. When I'm quilting motifs, I like to keep both sides symmetrical because that's what gives it the look of perfection. I'm not necessarily worried that I have the same number of petals of each side or that it's exactly the same length on both sides, but I wanna keep it as close as I can. This is what's gonna give it that look of perfection without having to actually mark it out before you start. Once that motif is finished, it's time to fill in around it. I added some echo lines and I'm gonna quilt some swirls in the background. This is gonna help smash down that area and really make that motif pop. And when I'm done, I have a beautiful yet simple motif that is easier to quilt than wrapping that feather around the border. Quilting the motif around the border is just as easy and looks just as great. I'm gonna use my designs with line stencil to help me find that nice center point, And I'm gonna mark just how far I want it to come out. And from here, I'll quilt the center of my motif and build my petals up and along the sides of the border. Now I know I have a lot of space on the outside of my motif, but I'm gonna use echoing and filler to fill that in. Now I'm gonna start adding my petals along the side. And just like I did on the prior motif, as my area gets narrower, my petals will get narrower as well. And what's great about this is I can extend that motif as far as I want, but I'm gonna stop when I get to the narrowest part. And I'm gonna use echoing to get back to the center and add my petals on the other side. Placing the motifs in the corner and along the sides of the border will give your quilting a wow impact. And you actually might find it easier than quilting that feather that wraps all the way around. Play around the placement of the motifs in your borders. You can add as many or as few as you'd like. You can just put them in the border corners if you want, or just in the centers, or mix and match between the two. The possibilities are endless. And when you're done, you'll have a beautiful corner motif that adds an elegant look to your quilt and fits that irregular area perfectly. Of course, you can also quilt your motifs using the basic feather technique. Just quilt the center as normal, use traveling to get out to the edge, and then quilt your petals in half heart shapes returning back to that center repeat on the other side. It just goes to show that no matter how you quilt your motifs, they're a perfect design option for the borders of your quilts. Now I'm gonna show you another option for quilting feathers in the borders of your quilt. We're gonna learn how to break our feathers up into chunks to fill in the area and how to connect them so that they look seamless as we work our way along the border. I'm gonna quilt my feathers so that it follows the design of the fabric. I'm gonna start by quilting my spine so that it echoes the center part. Then I'm gonna travel over and do the same on the other side. Now I'm gonna start adding my petals along the side.
Then I'll travel along the edge, echo my spine, and repeat on the other side. Now I've echoed the other side and I'm gonna start adding my pedals. However, I know that I'm eventually gonna to wanna to hook it in to this side. When I make my first pedal, I'm gonna have it come out and pretend as though it's touching something. I'm just gonna quilt it out here and then travel back. So it's gonna look kind of weird at first, but eventually I'll make them fit together. Now that I have the middle section done, it's time to add it around the corner. I'm gonna have the next part of my spine come out here so that it goes around that corner and then runs into the edge, kind of following the general curve of the print. And now that I have that, it's time to start adding my petals. And since this is just a section that's eventually gonna hook into the next one, again, I'm gonna quilt my first petal so that it reaches out into space and doesn't really land on anything, knowing that eventually I'm gonna come back and add the next one. Since this is the outer border of my quilt, I know that I'm gonna eventually come in and put in some binding. So if I wanna make sure that I don't lose the curve of my petal, I'm gonna stop them at least a quarter inch away from the edge. I actually like to leave myself about a half of an inch. That way, if I need to square up the quills or if anything has to be trimmed down, I don't have to worry about cutting off my petal. I'm gonna come back later and add echoing just to fill in that unquilted area. Once I get past my quilted spine, I'm just gonna use this seam as the spine of my petals and quilt them to fill in that area. Once I get close to my previously quilted feather, I'm gonna to have to start thinking about how I'm gonna join them together. I like to stop with just a few inches of space so that I can approximate the next few petals and just see how it's gonna work out. I think it should work out pretty good. I have about enough space for two petals. However, if I didn't have enough space or there was too much space, I could make my petals a little bit larger or a little bit smaller so that they fit that area. I'd rather take the difference and spread it out over a few petals as opposed to getting to the end and having a really tiny petal or a really large petal. Once you're done and you step back, it's not gonna be very obvious where those hook together. But now I'm done with this side, I just need to echo my spine and then quilt my petals to fill in the inner side of my feather. And once that section's finished, it's time to move on to the next corner. But I don't wanna to forget to add that echoing and fill those gaps around the corner. And now that I've filled in this portion of the border, it's time to work on the next corner, doing the same thing, quilting my spine and adding my petals on both sides. I'm gonna have a gap in between my two sections. So I'm gonna travel over so I can start adding my petals. Connecting them from this side is a lot easier than the other way. Again, don't forget to leave yourself a little bit of space between your petals and the edge of your quilt. Once I run out of spine, I'm gonna travel back up, echo my spine, and add petals on the other side. And just like we learned in an earlier video, the inner side is gonna have less room for my petals. So they're almost gonna lay on top of each other as they make that turn. But don't stress out about it. It really doesn't matter as long as the whole area is filled in. But once you've quilted your feather, it's time to start working within these darker areas of our border. You could put some dense filler right here to make that feather pop, or you can even do some straight lines that will really kind of flatten it and show off that feather. But since this is the Fabulous Feathers Free Motion Challenge, I'm gonna quilt motifs in these little areas. First, I'm gonna stitch along this outside just to help hold it in place. Then I'm gonna quilt a cute little motif similar to the one we learned earlier in this video. I'm gonna do the same as other blue curved portion, except I'm gonna start my motif on the same side as the other one. That means it's gonna be quilting along this curved line for the most part. I like it when my motifs are pointing toward the center and I really try to avoid quilting motifs that start on the edge of the quilt, especially for these outer borders because I don't wanna to have to worry about leaving that quarter inch space and trying to travel along the edge. If you want, you can go ahead and leave this area unquilted knowing that once the binding gets added, you're not gonna have any gaps bigger than the design itself. However, I like to quilt things to death, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my echoing and filler to fill it in. Okay, now it's your turn. If you purchase the border panel for the Fabulous Feathers Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along panel, go ahead and fill it in with the feathers of your choice. You could use motifs like I've shown you, you can quilt feathers or any of the variations. 
If you have any questions about the techniques I've shown in this video, be sure to check out the free downloadable quilting diagrams. And if you need a little bit more help, I have an expanded resource with even more quilting diagrams and tips. I have to admit, I'm just a little sad. That concludes our Fabulous Feathers Free Motion Challenge. Over the last seven videos, we have learned how to quilt feathers in different ways on our quilts, from blocks to backgrounds, from motifs to irregularly shaped areas, and even more. And even though this is the end of the challenge, it doesn't mean it has to be the end of our time together. Join me on Thursdays at 3 p.m. Central for my live chats. During these live chats, I answer your questions live, I talk about quilting techniques. It's just a fun way to stay connected in between the free motion challenges. And hey, I wanna see pictures of your progress. So if you're quilting along with me, post pictures on social media using the hashtag FMQChallenge so that I can see your beautiful progress. Well, thanks so much for quilting along with me. I look forward to seeing you Thursday for our live chat. Until then, happy quilting.